last thing I have written down is okay. So here's here's where we left off. I got I had to remember where I put this. In. Okay, so if we have uh, let's say we have something like this. We've got some polynomial and we're told that some big fourth degree polynomial and we're told that this quadratic expression is a factor of the fourth degree polynomial. This is what we left off with yesterday. You know, what are our options? Well, you know, we know that if it's a factor, it has to divide into the polynomial easily or evenly, right? There's going to be no, no remainder left over. And so all we got to do then is, is uh, we're going to divide it in and then whatever's left over will factor that, right? Okay, uh, good, but that requires long division, right? So Seth saw a, a shortcut here, a good shortcut. He saw that that this quadratic factor of our polynomial is itself factorable, right? It factors into x plus 7 times x minus 5, right? And so we've got these, we know then that we've got these two linear zeros, right? One zero is x equals negative 7, and the other zero is x equals positive 5, right? Okay, it is uh, So we could, we could put those in sequentially and do use synthetic division and do it easily. Yes, sir? I am recording. Yeah. You can't believe me? No, no, that's all. You sure? He's bars. Well, yeah, I did this is just a unique. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. So if we uh, if we divide these in it doesn't matter what the order is, right? If we divide the top one first, we're gonna divide the big fourth degree polynomial by x plus seven first, get that answer, and then divide by x minus five. We could do that using this little process, you know, just kind of nesting synthetic division. And this is a pretty slick way to do it. This is really only effective if we know that we're getting zeros. So How many times can you can do this as many as you wanted to. And the nice thing about it is every time you do it, if you know, if we know that this is a zero, right, we know we're going to get back a zero here, then every time you do it, the process just gets smaller by one column, doesn't it, right? So we divided the negative 7 in synthetically into our big polynomial, and we got back these coefficients and zero remainder, which we had to get, right? And so then all we got to do is go again. We'll just draw another synthetic bracket and put our remainder box. And we know we're going to get a zero here as well because we knew going into this that negative 7 and 5 were zeros, right? And so then now we're, we're down to the point where, okay, we know what we get back. This is, we only have three coefficients, so it's quadratic, right? The other factor that we're looking for is just this guy right here. Well, if it's quadratic, we can solve it. It's easy, right? And we can use the quadratic formula if nothing else, but it doesn't factor. And this one doesn't factor, or at least it didn't factor very easily. So we applied the quadratic formula, and we got two solutions. We got 11 halves for one solution, and we got negative 7 fifths for the other. Right? And so then we were just in the process of, what were we doing? We were going to write this, this whole thing out, right? So if we're going to turn these... We're going to turn these zeros into factors, okay? Because they wanted us to, I believe, wasn't the original problem to, to find the other factors. So let's say we're going to write this thing in factor form. Okay, that's our goal is to write this in factor form. Yes, sir? Um, when you do the nested division, does it matter what order? Makes no difference. Right? Makes no difference, yeah. Because we know that, we know that these are both, zeros of the of the polynomial so it doesn't make any difference I, I know i'm going to get as long as they get zero in the remainder box I, I know i'm okay and they both will do that for me okay does that make sense okay. so then let's turn each of these into a factor so if we get the factor x equals 11 halves or the, the zero, how do I turn that into a factor? What's my recipe? X minus the zero gives me the factor, right? And I think I just lost track of totally how we were doing that, but uh, I can't remember exactly what the, right, 2x minus 11. I can't remember if I was going to do another, I just lost my train of thought here when I was doing yesterday. I, I remember I had a really good idea how to illustrate this, but I can't remember what it was. 
So we always know that we can just subtract the zero. So that's it, but we don't want to have a fractional zero. What we'd rather do is, is, rat, or is uh, you know, write that without, we'll clear the fractions and write that without fractions by multiplying through by two, right? Because think what, think how we're getting this, right? We're getting this from the equation x minus 11 halves equals zero. That's how we get this result, isn't it? So what are you doing right now for doing this with examples? Right, right. We're finishing the one up from yesterday. So if we know that we get the answer, if this is a zero right here, then x minus the zero has to equal zero, right? That's why it's a zero. It makes the function equal to zero. So that's the equation. Like if we were working, I don't know what I was going to do. Yeah, I was going to do something like this. If we give you an example, an easy example, because I really want you, this is all I want to do today. Let's just get this one concept down, and then I'm good. So what if we had something like this? What if we had, let's say, uh, let me up. what if we had something like, well, let's say we factor something. We don't have to even start from the beginning. Let's say we get a, we get a polynomial factor, and it factors into 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 7, let's say, times x equals 0. We, got, we get it into factor form. Okay. What are the zeros? What are the answers? 0, zero, zero. and 7, 7. OK, and the way we get this, so let's go through all the steps. The way we get this is we get 2x plus 5 equals 0, right? OK. Uh, we could write this if we wanted to then. Uh, as x plus 5 halves if I divide. We don't necessarily do this step, but I want to show you that it, that it could be there. x plus 5 halves equals 0 if I divide each side by 2 to make that an x. Everybody see that? Right? And so that's the same thing as x minus negative 5 halves equals 0. And so what's the solution then? Negative 5 halves. Right? Now, we would probably just skip down there from right there, wouldn't we? Yeah. But those steps could still be there, right? How about this guy over here? Same thing. Same thing. We're going to set this equal to 0. 3x minus 7 equals 0. And even if we skip down to the answer, x equals 7 thirds, if we repeat the process, if we reverse this, this is the factor that we should get out of it, right? Well, how would we get from there to there? I mean, we don't usually do those steps. Yeah, but we could just, we could clear the fraction and make this 3x equals 7, and then subtract 7, right? And there's our factor. That's what we're setting equal to 0, isn't it? Right, to solve for x. So what about here, then? If that's, right, if, if that's my 0, that's what's being set equal to 0, right? This is my 0. x minus that is equal to 0 then this is my factor, right? Well, I could also just multiply each side by 2 and get 2x minus 11 equals 0 without the fractions, right? So what's our simple rule? If I get a fractional 0, then I know that I can just essentially do like bottoms up, right? I can just multiply each side by 2, and whatever the denominator is, it's going to become the coefficient of x every time. We just have to get to the point where we can see that this 0 gets associated with the factor 2x minus 11. Right? Does that make sense? OK, so, so what is then, what's this one going to be? Now, don't say it out loud. If that's my 0, x equals negative 7 fifths is a 0. The factor, the simplest factor, without fractions, right? That goes with it is what? Five x minus seven. Plus seven. It's x plus, plus 
right? It's x plus right. 7 fifths, not minus, right? Because that's what we would said equal to 0 to get that answer. And then when we clear the fractions, we multiply both sides by 5, we get 5x plus 7. That's the simplest factor that has that as a 0. If I said it would equal to 0. It's a pretty smooth curve. It's pretty smooth curve. There's years of practice to do that. Okay? Can you draw a perfect circle? A perfect circle? Oh, you know how to do it? You like swing your arm. You like it's hard to do. This, this is an awkward height to do it on. So yeah. It's a little bit of an awkward height. You kind of need, like, you stand next to a board and you just go like that. Yeah. Have you seen the guy with the chalk? And he, like, he makes, like, dotted circles in there. Oh. Uh -huh. Builds it an ankle and, like, skips. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that. He's such a beast. He's but if you kind of stood back here, he's like 96 years old. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, That's all right. Try again. <laughs> all right. Uh, have at it. You guys can work, get some questions answered. I'm going to put the first assignment up. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before I start it, so I was going to ask you about that one question. Sure. 